So now you're going to listen to the most important topic and you're not allowed to sleep. And this topic has a solution to all the problems they have already discussed. I made a list and it is about 17 diseases, stress, diabetes, ADHD, oxidative stress, anxiety, heart disease, chronic fatigue, depression, forgetfulness, excessive sleepiness, immune system, and even anger and divorce and fibromyalgia. And I'm gonna tell you my remedy and my advice will fix most of the problems. But there's a condition, you're not allowed to sleep in this brief presentation. <laughs> so we spend one third of our time in sleep. And 10 years ago, I have never heard after medical school and practice from a doctor or from a patient about sleep. I used to see patients and I would never ask them, how did you sleep, sir? And I had not heard about 12 years ago, and you know, name a few sleep diseases. So what we used to do is, you know, patient comes and, you know, just diagnose them with whatever, depression and this and this and chronic fatigue. And we would never even ask them what they are doing at night. They may be just up all night and we as a doctor still would not ask, how did you sleep, sir? And patients would assume that is a routine that I don't sleep. And doctor didn't ask me, so I don't have to share that information because that's probably understood. If you sleep or don't sleep, that's not a disease. So, um, one third of our time we spend in sleep and why we do that, why God made us sleep. Because whatever we do, whatever we do during the day, that's the time to recover from all the stress, the damage, what we do. And uh, can we just let me see. So what is a normal sleep? Normal sleep ranges from five to. 10 hours actually and uh, for some people five hours are great some people need 10 hours but what does that mean that if somebody took five hours of sleep and that is enough for him that depends how did he perform during the day if he's certain and going and yelling at nurses that means he probably didn't sleep and if it's a mom who's yelling at the kids and she thought she slept six hours, seven hours, and she had a great sleep, probably she needed two more hours of sleep. So eight hours of sleep, and you are happy and smiling and enjoying the sun and the greenery and like happy like Dr. Chaudhary, that means you got a great sleep last night. So that's the definition of good sleep. Eight hours for me, I, I must have to have eight hours. And somebody, you know, I have friends who with five hours, they are happy and playing tennis and still are not cranky. So there are like, uh, you know, four stages of sleep, but I'll just, there's one non-REM and then the other REM. REM sleep, we dream, the other sleep, we don't dream. Um, so those are like, it restores our body, the muscles, our mind, it actually, gives us ability to adopt what we are doing. So if we don't rest well, you all know what happens next day. So what are the symptoms of lack of sleep? You know, the symptoms are most common are tiredness, fatigue, excessive sleepiness, so if anybody I find here during my conversation, he might be dozing, that means he probably didn't get a good sleep last night. Irritability, anxiety, forgetfulness. And actually I work in the hospital and I see when even my residents are a physician, if, you know, if a doctor or surgeon is throwing things on the nurses, I say, you know, that's not his personality. He probably didn't get a good night's sleep. And they are, you know, notorious to undersleep and try to perform more. 
family discord, accidents. Now we know that most of the most accidents, you know, are from lack of sleep. So what are the common disorders of sleep? To me, the most common disorder is poor sleep hygiene. So what does that mean? Nowadays, we all are with our iPhones till we really are falling asleep, are on iPads, our kids are watching TV, our video games. And I have many patients who would not sleep unless their TV is on, the lights are on. So how are you going to sleep good? And uh, if somebody is reading before sleep on a computer or an iPad and they fall asleep, I can guarantee you, you are not going to wake up fresh because it adjusts to a circadian rhythm in a way that if you wake up, you're still going to feel to get wanting more sleep. Obstructive sleep apnea, insomnia, and restless leg syndrome. Those are a few of the common problems people face. And uh, out of those problems, I'm going to talk about one problem which is very common but still underdiagnosed and that is linked to a lot of problems all the speakers spoke and more and more we are learning about that and more and more we are finding that it is linked to all the diseases which we are treating as a primary care physician or psychiatrist or a heart doctor or even a lung doctor and that is obstructive sleep apnea. <clears throat> So what is obstructive sleep apnea? You all know that or heard or seen people snore and you must have all seen people kind of sleepy during the day or tired. So obstructive sleep apnea is a disease where when we fall asleep at night our airway closes and it interrupts the breathing and by interrupting the breathing it interrupts sleep and it wakes us up from sleep which we may know or we may not know and that's where you know the airway in the back gets obstructed at different levels and what exactly happens the upper airway collapses during our sleep completely or partially and either it reduces the flow of air and causes struggling and interruption in sleep or it completely causes it like an airway closure. It's like somebody choking at you and you are struggling or, or you are drowning and trying to get up, out, out, get out of the water. That exactly what is obstructive sleep apnea and uh, it is linked to oxidative stress because when we sleep normally what happens our blood pressure goes down and heart rate usually slows down but when somebody is choking you what's going to happen we are going to fight back. So at night during sleep when airway closes, our heart rate goes up, blood pressure goes up and then it happens all night. So a heart rate, blood pressure goes up, goes down, up and down. And that leads to like somebody calling me at all night from emergency room for new patients. So I'm going to wake up tired, exhausted, like I never went to sleep. That exactly patient with obstructive sleep apnea, when they wake up, they feel like they were running marathon all night, or they are more tired in the morning compared to when they went to sleep. And that leads to all the symptoms they have during the day, that tiredness, fatigue, cranky mood, and excessive sleepiness sleeping while driving <clears throat> it's not only that uh, this disease is linked with all the symptoms i'm uh, mentioning it is linked with diseases actually we have 
It's been proven to increase the risk of hypertension. It is proven to increase the risk of diabetes mellitus, obesity, heart disease, cardiac arrhythmias, and even forgetfulness, loss of memory. <clears throat> so those are the consequences of obstructive sleep apnea. It's depression, hypertension, increased insulin resistance, death ultimately, which is an end result of everything we talk, hormone disruption, increased risk of snoring and stroke and memory problems, increased traffic and workplace accidents. When I say workplace accident, what does that mean? That means if I, I go sleep deprived and I'm treating patients, you know I can be a source of accidents even in the hospitals. And same way if somebody is on the wheel and driving truck at night, and if he's or during the day actually, he's at increased risk of accidents. <clears throat> so how we diagnose this disease? Obviously symptoms and then we need a sleep study to diagnose that. Polysomnography is an overnight study where you go in a sleep lab and you sleep there. And that uh, gives a diagnosis that if you have sleep apnea or not. <clears throat> those are just all the damage sleep apnea causes and its associated cardiovascular complication. So how we treat it? As I mentioned that it's an airway collapse during sleep and uh, we need to overcome that airway collapse when we sleep. The gold standard treatment for sleep apnea is CPAP. It's like a positive airway pressure. So basically you're gonna be sleeping with a mask and now you sleep and nobody's choking you because this air is coming on the way. So you sleep, this airway keeps your airway open. So now you're not gonna snore and your sleep is gonna be uninterrupted through the night. So people are not gonna wake up at night to go to the bathroom. They are not gonna be tossing and turning. They're not gonna be cranky in the morning. They're not gonna wake up feeling that they were running a marathon. They're gonna feel like it's a beautiful day, it's sunny, it's green. But people who have sleep apnea, when they wake up, usually they tell that they, when you, they wake up, they're so tired that they basically feel like crap. So there are some other treatments actually. One are the dental devices. The goal is to keep airway open and uh, if you ask me, it will be hard to sleep something in your mouth, you will keep, but some people like it. And then there's a last resort treatment. If somebody doesn't like CPAP, doesn't like dental device, then it's a surgery. In last 10 years, I have not sent a single patient for surgery because that still doesn't fix the problem. So what fixed the problem? Obviously, if you are overweight, losing weight does help and sleeping better helps you to lose weight and then helps you to help with your sleep apnea. But CPAP is a gold standard treatment. So if anybody, you know, see somebody, you learn to like it. That's your basically partner, which is gonna give you a better life. So I think my time is up and thank you very much for listening.